This is a quick video over the generation, general mole balance equation. So the general mole balance, balance equation. So let's say we have a system that has V for volume. So we have some system that has volume V and it has a feed line and a product line. And let's assume that we have a very basic equation, A, so some reactant A going to B. So this is our very basic equation for just this system. So that's our reaction that's going on in the system. And let's assume we have one mole of A, mole of A, going into the system per minute. So then that means the feed rate, or the molar flow rate of A, is equal to one mole per minute. So we put this little knot there to indicate that this is actually the feed, what's coming into the system initially. So this is the initial flow rate, or the, mol the molar flow rate of A into the system. Now A is also leaving the system. So we have some flow rate of A leaving a system, we just call that FA. So FA indicates the moles of A leaving per time. So let's say we have 0 0.5 moles of A leaving per minute. Now that means that A is being consumed in the system or it's just accumulating in the system. So we're going to say that we're going to say that the change in the moles of A, so D in A, so N just represents the number of moles of A, just represents moles of A. So the change in the moles of A with respect to time DT is equal to the generation of moles of A, R could be the consumption of moles of A, plus the moles of A flowing into the system, so FA0, minus moles of A leaving the system, FA. So if we assume that the system is at steady state, that means the, if we were just to look at this system, the moles of A changing inside this system, in here, is not changing. Even though they're being consumed, the total moles of A inside this system, with respect to time, is not changing. So we're assuming that it's at steady state. So it's at steady state. So that means this must equal zero. That must equal zero. So this, this is zero. So if we have, if we have the mole flow rate of A at equal one mole per minute, and we know that we have 0.5 moles of A leaving, 0.5 moles of A leaving per minute, then for this to be at steady state, the generation of moles of A must equal, or actually it's a consumption of A, must equal a negative 0.5 moles of A per minute. So we have 0.5 moles of A being consumed inside the system. So this G, this generation can also, so I guess this G, usually you just see it as GI or GA. GA is really just equal to, it's just equal to the generation or consumption consumption of a of a so if, again if it's at steady state that means that we must have we must have consumption of a so we must have 0.5 moles of a consumed per minute for it to be at, be at to be at steady state so now let's find the equation for the generation or the consumption of a so we know we have sum of A being consumed, so GA, and that must be react must be be related to the reaction rate of A. So there's some reaction rate RA, and really RA is dependent upon the the total volume of the system. So V. So V. That's what we get. So so if we had a bigger system, a much larger system we'd have more of A being consumed than we would uh, than we would if we had a smaller system. So if this was just a thin pipe, A would just be flowing right through, so we'd probably only have like 0 0.05 or 0 0.09 moles of A leaving the system. But if it was an enormous system, like it was just an enormous swimming pool or something, I mean, it would, it would flow in there, assuming that the flow rates are relatively small in comparison to the volume, you would have most of A being consumed. So if you increase the volume, you increase GA, and if you decrease the volume, you decrease GA. So let's say, 
we have some volumes in here. Some volumes. We have volume one and volume two. Volume two, or it could be volume A and volume B. So we have these two volumes. Now is your reaction rate the same in volume one as it is in volume two? No, so we actually, this has its own reaction rate. So it has R1 and R2. Actually that should be RA1 and RA2. So these two little cubes have their own reaction rates. So if we were to find out the total reaction or total generation or consumption of A in the system, and we made this into a, a ton of small little volumes, that must equal the summation of all these little volumes. So let's say we have I volumes. So we have the reaction rate of A and I, and for the change in the volumes, so really this is actually a delta V, delta V1, so actually delta V2 and delta V1. So this has its own little volume, so if we make delta V VI, and we sum all these together to where we have maybe an infinite number of small volumes, so we have I go into infinity, so basically what I mean by that is, we keep making the volume smaller and smaller and smaller. So if we keep making them smaller and smaller, that might remind you of integration. So really, this is now equal to the integration of the volume for the reaction rate of A dV. So if we integrate the reaction rate to volume V dV, we will get the generation or the consumption of A so our final system looks like DNA over DT is equal to VRA, whoops, A, DV plus FA naught minus FA.